So starting off another video, um, and this time something a bit different. I'm going to do some product reviews now. Um, Carlink very kindly reached out to me and sent me this um, Android Auto system for use in the car, which basically um, this I'll, I'll go through the full details. But the model is this is the uh, CPC 200T box. Ultimately, what you do is you plug this into the car um, if you've got Android Auto or, or Apple CarPlay. Um, and this ultimately gives you loads more extra features. So I thought we'd start off with a quick unboxing. I mean, it is tiny, but let's go through this. This model in particular is the 8 gig of RAM, 128 gig ROM. So the packaging all seems quite smart, nice sturdy boxes. And this thing is like tiny i mean i've literally just opened the box to have a look at it i haven't taken out any cables or anything like that but it is really really small i mean if you use a mouse in comparison on the size it is tiny so really handy you can put that pretty much anywhere i would think in the car so you've got usb a on one side on the other side we have um usb c and it looks like that's for power and then you've got a SD card slot and a SIM card slot. So if you haven't got a phone or and you just want to run straight off this, you could put a data SIM in there and run it independently. Let's have a look what else we've got in here. All right, so we've got USB-C to USB-C cable. We've got a USB, oh no, it's a micro HDMI. Where's that going? Maybe that's more for an adapter if you're using it in a car, if you want to run a standard HDMI to this. Can't actually see it anywhere on the device where you plug that in unless. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, behind there. So you can actually plug this in and use this as an output to an external screen, which I think. It's going to be a bit of a game changer for me because when we go out with the kids on long journeys, we go to Plymouth quite a lot. Um, I've got one of these kind of Android screens on the back of the headrest that the kids watch their movies on. But the problem is I've got no way of controlling it from the front of the car. So you have to keep trying to give them instructions or stopping, pulling over and then changing the movie where if I can do everything from this box and then using the HDMI output on this, put that to the screen that'll work really well. So that could be a bit of a game changer, but that's pretty much what you get. So you've got a USB-A to USB-C, USB-C to USB-C, and the uh, mini HDMI to the standard HDMI. Uh, we've also got a little tool there if you need to remove your SIM card from your phone and put it in there. These ones look like they're just clicking and out. And then we've got the user manual. So yeah, so you've got SD card, SIM card, and then USB-C, and on the other side, as it says here, you've got the HDMI output, and uh, you can use the USB-A socket, it says on that, for other drives. So if you've got a load of movies on a drive, you could probably put them into there as well. So yeah, so that's the unboxing. Like I said, it all seems quite well put together. So let's go and try it out and plug it into the car. Okay, so for this test, I'm just going to use uh, Land Rover Discovery. So this is a 2018 Land Rover Discovery. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, the BMW I have, this system isn't actually compatible with it, according to the manufacturer. They've given me a list of the cars it doesn't work with, so I'll obviously put that in the description. But um, I will still try it and just sort of see why it doesn't work and the functionality. But for the moment, all I've done, literally just plug the device in to the USB just there. I'm just going to close this down. So there, we'll leave it on there. And straight away it's detected it. So let's go for load device with Apple CarPlay. Try with that. All right, ready to start bringing calibration. Oh, there we go. Didn't operate this, so show again. Okay. So that's now loaded up the device. 
Hopefully you can see the screen okay. And so we can do various different things. Let's go into the menu. So we've got car options, Google Maps. Apologies if you can hear the rain in the background. It is absolutely torrential today. Um, so let's go with YouTube. And then, of course, um, I need to get it onto the Wi-Fi. So give me two seconds. I'll hook up um, my phone on a hotspot. Remember, you can put a SIM card directly into the side of it. Let me get my phone on the hotspot. We'll get this on Wi-Fi and we'll go from there. OK, so that's it connected to uh, my phone. And now we can click off there. And to get to this menu, just drag down from the top. So let's go back to YouTube. Bear in mind, my internet signal around here is not very good anyway, but you'll get the rough idea. This is not a failure of the device. This is literally a failure of our local data provider. So we've got all these bits. Let's just go accept all. Yeah, this is working quite quickly. We stick my latest video on. Oh, enough of hearing from him. So anyway, yeah, so that works really well. So you can do loads of other functions on it. Um, so if we go back to the home screen, if you hit this button here, you can see all the different apps. So like I said, you've got Google Maps. I don't really want to show you where I live. So uh, now, but there you can do your Google Maps. You can put your navigation in so you can use it from that point of view. You can actually download um, other apps onto it. So here you got YouTube and all the other bits and pieces installed. But if you've got sort of like individual install files on APKs, you can put that onto the USB, plug it into the side, and then that'll like install other apps on here as well. Let's go through so we can do searching on the internet. And then we can do Netflix. Uh, I will have to log in with our account and I'll come back to you in a sec. Okay, so that's all logged into Netflix now. So like for me, if I've got the children in the back, you can, it will still show the program playing on here. So I can't iterate more. If you're in the UK, that is illegal to watch TV. However, I'm showing you the functionality of this. Maybe you're sat in an electric car waiting for it to charge. You can watch some Netflix on there. Um, the other option you've got is, you know, maybe you're doing the school run and you've got to sit and wait for one of your children. You've got a bit of time to enjoy this. And this is such good value for money. I mean, I, I'm really impressed. You just literally plug it in and it works. Um, but for me, ignoring this screen and having it to be able to control the rear screen on long journeys when the children are constantly changing their minds of what they want to watch, that is the game changer for this for me. And I most definitely will be getting it installed to Katie's new car when that arrives. So. Let's have a look at, let's just go for children. Okay, so you've got the option to download as well. So, one of George's favorites, he loves Sing. Again, don't think it's running slow. That's just literally my internet connection from the phone is being a bit rubbish. Okay, so that was a bit of a fail trying to watch something that was purely down to phone signal. There's nothing else wrong with this. So um, just give you a couple more instructions. So if you want to kind of come out of the menu, you just tap the screen, that little dot appears, you can go back to home. If you want to go back to the car, hit the car symbol. It's there, that takes you back to the car control. Um, so you can do everything as normal. Um, and then I say just go back in, just go Apple CarPlay again. And it is very quick how it switches between all the various different bits on here. I mean, some of these, um, smart devices they're a bit laggy 
So um, let's go back to home and then let's switch to, I mean, look at the speed of that, switching between the apps. Well, I think that is absolutely brilliant. So, all that. Yeah, so you've got Waze on there, you've got VLC for playing movies um, off the uh, memory stick or off the USB um, dongle if you want to insert one. You've got YouTube on there. You've got YouTube Music. And I say you can just jump around really quickly. Obviously, you can still use for your phone. So you can look at paired devices, use the phone on that one as well if you pair it via Bluetooth. So I think for like i say the quality of this and it feels smart it does feel like made out of really decent materials rather than cheap plastics it looks the part it's got cool rgb lights on the front of it if you want to upgrade your interior um, entertainment system for a fraction of the price and you've already got apple carplay then by all means definitely go and get one of these carlink kits and i'll say i'll post all the description all the details all the features down in the description just want to say and uh, excuse the mo it is november i'm trying to do my bit for charity um yeah so just forgot to say if anybody else wants to send anything for me to do reviews on this is my first ever review don't base the quality of the review on the first one um but i'm more than happy to have a look at different products somebody has sent me something else which i'll do a review on next week and my aim now is to kind of try and do two reviews a week and two or three um car videos a month start that again my aim <laughs> is to basically try and do two car videos a month and two review videos a month so we'll have week one will be a car video um doing more on the build week two will be a review week three car week four review and i'm going to try and keep the content going like that because it's easy for me to do these quick reviews because i can get them turned around quite quickly whereas with the car stuff it can take me two or three weeks to get enough footage together after doing all the work before I can get that uploaded. We'll go and test it in the BMW quickly now, see what it does in there. If it doesn't work, they've already told me it's unlikely to um, because BMW have some sort of unique system that doesn't allow it to take control, but can't hurt to try, can it? Let's have a look. Okay, so yes, the manufacturer is right. It does not work with the BMW system. The problem I have with the connectivity in the BMW, it seems to want to use Bluetooth rather than just plugging a cable in. I've tried the USB connection in here and the one down here both do the same i was really hoping it was going to work because this is the screen that is normally on the back of my seat which george and amelia watch um, and to be able to control this via something like this uh, car link device would have been well brilliant because <laughs> it would have saved me so much time having to try and instruct amelia to like click on apps click on prime click on this click on that so it is quite frustrating. So what I did think I might have been able to do is boot this up with the HDMI plugged into the screen and use this screen to then do the config. Um, but it's unfortunately not worked. So it is a shame that the car that I drive the most is the one that it doesn't work with. But hopefully this video has benefited everybody who's watched it. Um, again, I'll put a link in the description to my discount code. I'll also put a link in there to the number of vehicles which the manufacturer's advice it will not work with, which is a nice thing because some manufacturers just say will work with any, you know, Apple car player. They've been very, very honest. And I have to say the support from them, again, has been absolutely brilliant. So hats off to Carlink and uh, the Ultra HD box. So just to remind you, this is the uh, CPC 200 T box Ultra HD. Guys, if you want one of these in your car, go check out my link. And, and just add one to the basket. They might even be doing a Black Friday. Who knows? Thanks very much for watching. Speak to you later.